Okay, so we're going to look in this video at measuring temperature and the different devices we can use to do it. Um, and it links in with a lot of the stuff we've been doing on thermal physics in terms of how materials behave when we change their temperature. So the first thing we're going to look at is how liquid thermometers are made. So these are the thermometers that you will typically use in a lab. So essentially, um, they're very simple to make. So the first thing you do is you put some liquid into a column and you at a low-ish temperature and you mark the height of the liquid. Then what you do is you heat the liquid up to a known high temperature and you remark it. So essentially we've now got two marks on our measuring device. And then all you have to do is divide the difference up into divisions and that's what a degree is essentially. It's the uh, what hap it's the divisions when you split 100 and 0 into 100 equal divisions. So typically thermometers use uh, two fixed points, uh, the fixed points of water. So they use the melting point of water at 0 degrees as the low temperature. They use the boiling point of water at 100 degrees as the high point. And we divide that into 100 and that's what a degree is. It's essentially these the, the difference divided into 100. So that's how you make a liquid-based thermometer. It's quite a simple process. So when we're describing measuring instruments, we're going to be using three different uh, words to describe them. The sensitivity, the range, and the linearity. Uh, so we're going to add these to the key terms got at the front of our booklets. So I'm going to talk about a thermometer using these in a second to give them a bit more meat on the bone so we actually know what they mean. But for now, let's just define them. So sensitivity is the change in output of a device divided by a change in input. The range is the maximum reading minus the smallest reading. And linearity is when the output has a straight line relationship with input. So that's all very vague uh, and not very specific. So let's actually see how this applies to a thermometer. Uh, with a thermometer, the input is a temperature change. So we, we use the thermometer to measure temperature. And the output is the height of a liquid column. That's what actually tells us what the temperature is. Okay? So when we use the word input and output in the definitions, this is what we're referring to. So a more sensitive thermometer has a larger height change for each degree of temperature change. So let's say a thermometer has one millimeter height change for one degree temperature change and another one has two millimeters of height change for the same temperature change that's more sensitive that's what we mean um, so how can we actually change the sensitivity of a liquid thermometer okay well there's two ways of doing it uh, we can make the thermometer from a material which expands more so each different liquid will expand by different amounts when you change its temperature by one degree so we can pick one which has a larger expansion or we can use a narrower liquid column. So if we make the liquid column narrower, you'll have the same volume change when you change the temperature, but that will give you a larger height change. So the impact of that, so there's always a trade-off. So if we increase the sensitivity, the trade-off is we, can, we decrease the range of our measuring device. If we're having a much bigger height change, we can only we can have a smaller temperature change before we run out of space in our tube. So that's the trade-off. So linearity is more straightforward. So essentially, a linear thermometer is one in which the height change for each degree of temperature change is the same. So let's say for a given thermometer, when we go from 1 to 2 degrees, the height increases by 1 millimeter. But then if we go from 95 to 96, it also increases by 1 millimeter. So which wherever the degree of temperature changes, it changes by one millimeter in this particular case. That is what we mean by linearity. Well, the other way of saying that is if we plot a temperature against the height of our liquid, it would be a straight line graph. That would be another way of saying that. So let's have a look at a use another device, which we probably haven't come across before, that we can use for measuring temperature. And it's called a thermocouple. And it has three key parts. So it has a hot junction where these two different materials meet each other. So 
Red is one material, blue is a different material, and they'll both be conductors, and that's really important. So we've got two conductors, but they're made of different materials. They're usually copper and iron, but we do get some slight variations. So we have where they, where they meet each other called the hot junction. So those two wires are actually connected at that point. We have the opposite end, which is called the cold junction, which is where they're connected to the voltmeter, and this needs to be at a known temperature. So quite often we just use room temperature at these, so we know that both ends are at room temperature, but we can put them into something like ice, which will give a more controlled um, cold junction if we want to. The third part is a sensitive voltmeter. So that's why it says millivolts, because we need it to be very sensitive. We only get fairly small voltages out of this equipment. And those are the three key things that we need. So why do we need this device? Why can't we just use liquid? So first of all, let's describe how we use it, and then we can talk about its advantages. So what happens is we, when we've built our thermocouple, we will plot a graph of temperature versus voltage. So we'll use some known temperatures to plot this graph. And essentially, so we'll have a temperature versus voltage graph. So that's often called a calibration curve. And then you measure the voltage, and the temperature can then be read off the graph. So you put your the hot junction of your thermocouple into something you want to know the temperature of, read the voltage, go to your graph, and go, Ah, it's at this temperature. So we essentially use the graph that you've created with the known temperatures. Okay, so what are the advantages of a thermocouple? Well, there are actually two. The first thing is a thermocouple has a very large range of temperatures it can measure. Um, so a liquid, say we made a liquid thermometer out of water, the highest we could go to is 100 degrees, the lowest we could go to is zero. Either side of those is not a liquid anymore, so that limits our range of temperatures. A thermocouple can go into thousands of degrees, so it, it can work in much higher temperatures and it can work in lower temperatures as well. So that's one advantage. A thermocouple voltage also changes very quickly in response to temperature changes, far quicker than the material like a liquid will expand. So when you're using a liquid thermometer, you put it into it and you have to wait for it to adjust, uh, whereas a thermocouple will change almost straight away, which makes it very suitable for measuring like rapidly changing temperatures. So those are the reasons you choose a thermocouple. You're measuring very high temperatures or you're measuring quickly changing temperatures. Um, but it isn't any more accurate than a liquid-based thermometer, you know, so it's not better for those reasons. It's only these two reasons it works. 